Hello everyone, in my previous video about making Senko Hanabi fireworks, I briefly showed my process that I used to make charcoal. And if you watched that video, you may have noticed in the clips of that charcoal making process that the smoke coming off of my charcoal can is extremely flammable. This is known as wood gas, and it's composed of a variety of many organic compounds, from butane to methane, and even some elemental hydrogen. This is, of course, extremely flammable, and so it can be used to fuel many sorts of different things, even engines. In this video, I will be showing a simple process to make wood gas. And then later in the video, I might show an experimental method I've been thinking about to collect this wood gas so it can be put to good use. Wood gas is produced when any organic material, not necessarily just wood, is heated, but not allowed enough oxygen to catch on fire. The heat causes the chemical bonds that are in the organic material to break, so that you end up with methane and hydrogen and all of these volatile compounds escaping as gas. For my organic material, I have just chosen these small sticks, and I just need to figure out how to heat these without the presence of oxygen. So what I will do is enclose them in a small metal container, in this case, a small paint can. I want to pack my container as full as possible so that there's plenty of material in there to make a lot of gas. <sighs> well, I okay, thought... we, we said about when the wood burns, it's, it's producing butane, methane, and there's even some elemental hydrogen oh, in there. Right, okay. And oh. I'm thinking to myself, hold on, but isn't that what man makes Aren't those gases or those substances what man makes from processing that smoke? Or the, or the, the fumes. The fumes from the, from the partial burning yeah. of the wood. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But a lot of people would... Uh, a lot of people... Well, he said methane's got hydrogen in it, in it anyway. Well, methane, natural gas. It's all the same stuff. And uh, what's surprising is that he's actually... A, he's, well, he's saying in so many words that hydrogen comes from the wood material and not any water. Hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions, because... Oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Yeah, that's so true, yeah, of course, yeah. And the worst thing is, is that wherever I go, and I, whoever I talk to, all, I'm, all, I'm, all I encounter is views and opinions. People expressing their views and opinions. It's very rare that they'd actually tell me a fact, something that is factually true. Yeah, I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy, you know. But uh, obviously, a lot of people have got a lot to say. A lot of people don't like their drink, their illusions being um, destroyed. Destroyed. Mind you, I will say that I reckon a lot of people are a bit quieter now. Quieter in the quieter. sense that, well, in the sense that they're, they're more, more, a bit more uh, shy is, to speak out or to talk. To be themselves. To be themselves, yeah. That's probably because a lot of people don't know who they are as individuals yeah. to be able to be themselves. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I wouldn't want to be somebody I'm not. Because they, they might put on a pretense, aren't they? Well, a lot of people do pretend, you know. Hi, how are you? Yeah, Absolutely, fine, of course, yes. yeah. Oh, it's, it's been lovely. Oh, lovely to see you. Oh, I have not seen you in age. Oh, how have you been? I've not seen you in years. Oh, it's so nice to see you. I've, so, I've missed you so much. Yeah, absolute rubbish, of course. But uh, as you can see, we've got a few changes with uh, with uh, with the channel, a little bit with the video. We've got uh, we've got the background of uh, the uh, thorium reactor at, uh, in in the Netherlands. Yeah. And uh, above Peter, he's got uh, the new words uh, or our new slogan, which is exposing and exploring, exploring. exploring sorry, and exposing. Man's world of illusion. illusion. Because man's world is wherever you go on the earth, wherever you go, all human societies have built an illusion for their people, don't they? Yeah, whether it's the Greeks, 
yeah, their when, mythology, whether it's the Egyptians. Absolutely, of course. And the, the, the pharaohs coming, being, going into the eternal, having eternal life in the afterlife. Yeah, yeah. All that kind yeah, of rubbish, rubbish, you know. Yeah. And even now, to this very day, when we've got uh, science in modern society telling people that... Um, that you've water's H two O. The Earth's a spinning the ball. The Earth's a spinning ball, and there's oxygen in the air. Science presenting to people uh, an understanding of the world that is that can't be proved to be true. Yep. Just like the ancient Greeks with their mythological creatures couldn't be proved to be true, yep. but they still told. Believed in them. They still believed in them. And even the ancient tribes as well. I'm sure I'm sure there's an Indian tribe out there in America or in Africa, a tribe in Africa, who have beliefs about some kind of, I don't know, demon or some kind of god or some kind yeah, of... Yeah, whatever, yeah. That yeah. cannot be proved to be true. true. None of it. No. You know, but all they do is create an illusion for people. In their minds. In the minds. Absolutely, of course. It's all about mind control. Yeah, it's all about mind and people battle. Basically, we've got spiritual warfare. People are battling for people's minds mm. to yeah. win people over, to prevent them from being an animal, to prevent them from being real. You know, and experiencing real life, mm. of course. But uh, how are you, Peter? Are you well? Are you well, or are you well? Yeah, I'm very well, and we both hope you are all well too. Absolutely, of course. So what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for tonight? Well, for everyone's displeasure, we're going to revisit uh, Pigeon, no, Day Pigeon in Darkness. Okay, yeah, With his yeah. wood gas, because it hydrogen, with putting forward the view that hydrogen comes from wood. The material, not the water. Not any water, because a lot of people seem to think you can split water and produce hydrogen oxygen because the hydrogen comes from the water. Mm, yeah. whereas, no, 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 no. Uh, whereas we've got the information tonight which supports the idea that hydrogen comes from the actual fibre, the, the actual stuff of right. wood. Yeah, right. We're going to look at uh, James O'Brien, who's a, a talk, talk show presenter on LBC Radio. Absolutely, of course. Because he, like, he thinks... That Galileo demonstrated that the Earth was the, the Earth revolved around the Sun. Heliocentrism, yes, all those years ago. We're going to have a look at water splitting and free energy with our friend Stan Mayer. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to have a look at molten salt reactors. I don't need this. We got into a conversation with him about um, molten salt reactors, so, so we thought we'd explore them and have a look at how they actually work yeah uh, and we're gonna we, we've uh, I've, you've uh, found some information about a, a book written by a carpenter guy William Carpenter 100 proofs the earth is not a globe absolutely of course does yeah does it sound familiar way back in 1886 yeah but does it sound anything familiar with something that's been produced recently oh possibly of course yes eric dubay perhaps perhaps oh it's a little bit isn't it of course there we go but so uh, that's what we're going to do and yeah obviously hydrogen i've got to, i've got to add this but hydrogen obviously can come from other sources not just wood absolutely yes. you know i've just got to clear that out i don't want people thinking that i only think that hydrogen just comes from wood yeah but we're just putting it within the context of this video of course we're saying yeah. that it comes from wood yes as the Pigeon, light pigeon in darkness. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. But uh, so, um, first off, to, uh, to get us started, just got to have a reminder that uh, for anyone out there who thinks our views are incorrect or zany or insane or wrong or just whatever, feel free to come on to Zoom or if you fancy it, come on to uh, Discord, Discord with us and uh, show us the proof. Uh, that, that demonstrates that we're actually wrong. Yeah, we'll have a look at it, and if we think that yeah, we can't argue with you, you know, you are right. Cool. We'll take down any related video. Yeah, I could do a Nigel Farage, can I? And say yeah. say to that uh, French MP, prove it, prove it, prove it. Oh, oh, wasn't that when he when, when he was talking about the um, some article that was in the United Nations about asylum seekers? 
Oh, the UN uh, Geneva Convention, 1951. And there was nothing in the Geneva Convention that Nigel Farage... And Nigel Farage was actually saying that uh, an asylum seeker has to uh, declare asylum, seek asylum, declare in asylum... In the nearest country. In the next country they actually... Arrive at. Arrive at. Absolutely, of course. Whereas that's not right. Whereas, unfortunately, that's not the case. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, for a lot of Brexiters, uh, people can actually travel to where, where they want to go. Yeah, because people, if people want to come to the UK and seek asylum in the UK, they're well within their right to do that. And the French authorities can't stop them. Can't stop them and if hold them up to, in If you want to go, Calais you go, or wherever it was. you go, you go. That's where you want to go. Absolutely, of course. We've all, there's always been freedom of movement. Man, human beings have always migrated yeah. throughout all of it, his history. So, you know, stopping it now, you know, I don't yeah, think anyway. that's any, any possible. I don't think it's possible, really. Anyway, but um, yeah, if you think we, if you think any of our views are wrong, please, please, please show us some proof on Discord or on uh, Zoom, and we'll we'll quite happily take down any yeah, uh, videos, and we'll even apologise to anyone, uh, to all our viewers, and say we we got it wrong. Yeah, we've although, been somebody's shown us some proof that we're wrong. Yeah, although we won't kiss your feet. Absolutely, of course. But uh, so that's there for you guys out there, and uh, that's that. What next, then, Peter? Well, what's next is whatever's next on the... Well, let's have a look at James O'Brien. James O'Brien, yeah. James O'Brien. James O'Brien, yeah. Now, we, we, we listened to this uh, James O'Brien um, clip from his, uh, from his show on LBC. Because um, he, was, he was posing the question to his viewers, and that is, should we be talking about what people were saying at the Freedom March at the weekend. At the weekend, yeah, of course. Now, we did leave a comment, obviously, and here we go. And at 108, uh, James talks about Galileo being persecuted for demonstrating heliocentrism, and the Earth revolves around the Sun. Okay, let's have a little listen to this, okay? So, are we ready? Have a little listen to this. Well, oddly, with people like Galileo, it was also heresy, <laughs> you know, the, to, to go against the scientific uh, status quo of the time in his case with, with heliocentrism and, and demonstrating after Copernicus that the uh, earth revolves around the sun, not the other way around, of course, brought religion into question. It brought in the notion of creation. Well, OK, clearly, James O'Brien states categorically that uh, Galileo demonstrated heliocentrism yeah. okay now um we we wrote um yeah of course um i've researched a lot of info regarding the globe earth and have re reached the conclusion that there is no proof the earth is a globe so how galileo actually demonstrated heliocentrism is beyond me mm. how could he have done it way back in the 16th century was it not yeah, yeah. or something like that 1500 or um, another person who thinks something is true but that something cannot be proved to be true. This is James O'Brien, of course. Mm. Life's filled with these types of people. And um, we've got uh, five replies on that one. Uh, just got Mick Redding. Uh, rabbit meat Mick hole. hole. He's mm. put. Uh, no, rabbit meat hole. Rabbit meat hole. Yeah, the rabbit goes down the, down the rabbit hole. Um, yes, Mick, there is a rabbit hole that people can go down. Unfortunately, the rabbit hole exists because society is filled with rubbish. rubbish. Mm. It's filled with a lot of bullshit. No, it's, it's all an illusion, which is the pretense, which is the, uh, the portrayal of uh, something that's... An understanding. A, well, a, a, a perception. Sort of reality yeah. that sits on top of the real world. Of the real world. Of the real existence. Yeah. The real really? existence of people, of life. Uh, by the way, it's laughable. Most people do not trust politicians, but are willing to trust other people in society, like doctors, healthcare workers and teachers. Brian Cox. In my book, I don't trust anyone who represents society. The amount of mistrust in society is phenomenal. Mm, you know, yeah. I, I got, I, yeah, of course. Whole, I, you know, I wholly do not trust well, it reminds me of reminds me of Dell when he did that video when he was outside Celtic Football Club. And he was asking all these Scottish supporters, he was asking, uh, you know, do you trust the, the government? A lot, a lot of them said, nah, don't trust the government, nah, don't trust the government. Yeah. 
What do you think the Earth's a, go a globe? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. The, yeah. the the mount the mentality of it is just. Uh, I know. Yeah. The the people aren't principled, are they? No. Uh, but I suppose Spiros Pagiotakis Pagia uh, writes, "It is beyond you because you are not too bright, mate." Life's filled with your type of people, hence the sorry state of our society. Right, OK. Right, OK. So you've got no proof the Earth's a globe either. But you can divide people. Well done for expressing irrationality. Remember, James states very clearly that Galileo demonstrated the Earth to be travelling around the sun. And yet, how could, he have how could Galileo have done so when there is no proof of such a thing even today in 2021? 21. In my opinion, James forgot to mention to listeners that Galileo only demonstrated the idea of heliocentrism. Yeah. It's amusing. People actually think heliocentrism is true. true. Yeah, just like when they went to Salton Sea and there was old... Uh, uh, the Mark guy... Sergeant and there was some other guy who was trying to promote the Earth being a globe and they watched the boat go out into the sea beyond the horizon and then the guy said see this supports the idea that the earth is a globe so it's only an idea the globe earth the globe model is only that, an idea and that really when you think about it that is the correct way to describe it that, absolutely it's just an idea that's all it's uh, it, the boat going over the horizon is evidence to support the idea that the Earth is a globe. No, absolutely, of course. But if you're a flat earther, you'd say that the boat go, moves beyond the horizon. And that supports the idea the Earth is flat, a level, a plane. level plane. Absolutely, of course. It, it depends which way you want to look at it. Isn't it? It's a perceptual argument, isn't it? But like a lot of things with man, in man's world. Absolutely, of course. There's always a duality in man's world. Absolutely, but uh, we also got uh, we got on this page here about uh, LBC's page. What, why we need the COVID jab? James Bryan's powerful analogy for anti-vaxxers. There we go. So if obviously, we're an a lot of people are, aren't having the vaccine at all, as far as we can see from or from the information we've looked at. A lot of people yeah. are oh. not having the jab. And James O'Brien uses this analogy about seat belts to explain to anti-vaxxers why they should indeed have the COVID vaccine. It's not a vaccine. Yeah. Okay. It's Let's a jab. Get up the the the, the definition, definition of a, of a yeah, vaccine. Yeah, here we go. We've got uh, Come vaccine on. definition. Here we go. Vaccine definition. Here we go. Look, a substance everyone read this, please, please, please. A substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against one or several diseases prepared from the causative agent of a disease is products or synthetic substitute treated to act as an antigen without inducing the disease. disease. There you go. So why is it with the COVID vaccine um, people can still get it? Uh, you know, I can't understand what it, why. Therefore, it cannot be a vaccine. It's just got to be a... Um, yeah, it can't be a vaccine. Some kind it of trial experimental drug yeah, it cannot provide or such like it can't be a vaccine because it doesn't provide immunity absolutely yeah so by definition nobody should be calling it a covid vaccine that's why they say a lot of people say that it takes 10 years to develop vaccines sure but regard regardless um uh we've got he ran out a text during the show he ran out a text from mark in bournemouth who questioned why he hadn't mentioned why James hadn't mentioned the COVID-related deaths of those who had been double-jabbed. So people have been double-jabbed and yet, apparently, still died of COVID. Yeah. Because even if you are given the, va the vaccine, you can still contract COVID. But I thought it was a vaccine, so you should be immune from it. But it's not a vaccine. But anyway, James responded, the massive majority of people killed in road traffic accidents in this country are wearing seatbelts, Mark. And he's probably saying it in such a way that Mark's an idiot. So he's more or less saying that because they're wearing this, even though they've had the vaccine, they're still dying. Even though yeah. they're wearing seat belts, they're still, still dying. dying. Yeah, of course. What does that tell you about seat belts? Does that does it tell you they that they are pointless? No, it tells you that the massive majority of people on the roads in this oh, country yeah, it does. wear. But it does. It does tell you that they are pointless. Well, well, no, because. Oh, right, yeah, I suppose it you're right. It does tell yeah. you that they are pointless. 
Oh, well, I suppose in certain respects. Because yeah. people are still being killed in road traffic accidents wearing seat belts. Oh, right, yeah. So they really. So what difference does it make? Oh, but he didn't mention the airbags. He didn't mention the airbags as well, because you've got the seat belts plus airbags. Oh, right, well, yeah. So you've yeah. got double kind of protection against road traffic accidents, haven't <clears throat> you? RTAs. But anyway, no, it tells you that the massive majority of people on the roads in this country wear seat belts. People wearing seat belts get involved in car accidents and they get killed even though they are wearing seat belts. Literally nobody, Mark, except you think, thinks that proves that wearing seat belts are pointless. So in other words, you just define wearing seat belts even though people die. So you can still get you can still have the vaccine and you can still die. Allegedly. He likened it to the vaccine. But you see the thing is, how can he liken it to the vaccine? Mm. The vaccine is is, is uh, something that uh, is administered by a health professional. You don't it's got nothing to do with a vehicle. I mean it's not even made by Volvo. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know, the, the, none, well, none of the vaccines are made by any car manufacturer at all. Well, maybe you need the vaccine when you take your driving test. Absolutely, of course. So, um, yeah, it's just like Mark's view is certainty. It's, yeah, absolutely, of course. But the the point is, I can't understand the logic. I, I, if I was being interviewed by James over, I'd, I'd be I'd saying to him, I can't understand your logic, James. No, no, yeah. you know, mainly because seatbelts. Mainly, no, mainly because if you have an accident in a car, it's yeah, it all depends. usually caused by somebody else. And it all depends on a lot of other factors, like how fast you're travelling, the weather, the weather. You know, you've got an off whether you've got an airbag fitted in your vehicle, yeah. and lots and lots of other other factors. Whereas the COVID jab is how many factors have you got? You're either given it and you get it, or you're given it and you get it, or you don't get it. Well, you don't get it. There aren't many factors involved, yeah, no, you know. No. So I can't see how that um, analogy is uh, is pretty pointless. Anyway. Yeah. But there's an awful lot of people in society trying to persuade people to get the jab. And you could actually argue, you could actually argue that people wouldn't need to wear seatbelts if people drove safely according to the highway code, code. and drove safely and maintained their vehicles. Cool. Properly, absolutely, yeah. you wouldn't need to wear a seatbelt. You seat wouldn't belt. need to wear seatbelts because, absolutely, of course. And also, if they even lessen the, uh, if people, if they reduce the speed limit as well, yeah. and reduce the amount, the numbers of cars on the road, yeah. and also um, made ensured that when people drive, they weren't stressed. Yeah, they weren't stressed out, and they weren't in that rush to get to work or in that rush to do this or to do that yeah. or got things in their, on their mind while yeah. they're driving. They weren't looking at their phone yeah. while they're driving, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't, yeah, you know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have all these accidents. You wouldn't have all these accidents. So in other words, what we're saying is is that a lot of accidents are simply caused by human stupidity. Yeah, yeah basically. By human error, yeah. by human neglect. Humans. Human cause, nature. Human nature. Yeah. You change human nature, you'll get rid of all of the problems. You know, get rid of the problems, get rid of causes, and the, get, effects, and will the effects will go. Absolutely. You know. So you can actually argue that you don't need. You don't need to wear seatbelts belts at all. Absolutely. So but get then, rid of get rid of people and and their the way they behave and their their bad uh, behaviours. Traits. And you you won't get COVID. You Absolutely. don't need the vaccine. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course. There you go. Look at that. Superb. Absolutely, yeah. Anyway, so that's that one. Uh, but it's a very good uh, thing about the vaccine. You know, there's can't be a vaccine, can it? Mm. Anyway. So anyway, so it's but I would agree with some things that she, the nurse, the former nurse, some things she was saying. I would agree were a bit kind of uh, extreme. Extreme, yeah, maybe. But uh, yeah, sure. But it's nice. It was nice for, for James O'Brien to talk on the on the radio, and hear his listeners. Uh, all made the majority of them all come and talking in saying how disgusting they were about the things that, that were being said by these speakers at the at yeah, the, yeah sure at the march because it wasn't it wasn't a very it was an unbi it was a biased uh, show wasn't it oh his was yeah he should have got uh, he should have got a few people on the show who um, didn't want the vaccine and what was interesting was that he had a caller from someone who was. Uh, going through a, um, a situation where members of his own family were uh, uh, conflict uh, loggerheads 
because he didn't like the way that these his members of family were actually breaking up breaking, and arguing. Yeah, arguing over, over the, the COVID, COVID and the vaccination. And lots of other things. Yeah, because we met someone a couple of weeks ago who was uh, we know from the Chester Flat Earth Group. Yeah, yeah. Whose mother works at the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And she was saying that the, they were getting more people coming in as a result of having the jab. Yeah, with uh, some with symptoms, with, with symptoms, problems, you know, health problems because of the yeah. because of the jab. Uh, you know whether that's true or not. I mean, I don't know, but so uh, that's what we were told. So you know, yeah. But uh, you know, you've only got to look at thalidomide. Do you know what I mean? Well, absolutely, of course, yeah, sure. But yes, it is worrying, isn't it? Of course, yeah. Yeah, because if you're pregnant, you're exempt from it, aren't you? What the COVID vaccine? Yeah, really. I'm sure you are. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Because I don't want uh, flamidum. Flim- Thalidomide affecting the children. Repetition. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, that, all that's nasty, isn't really it? Is. Yeah. Anyway, we'll best say goodbye to James. See you later, James. Oh, now, let's do some water splitting. Now, um, uh, lots of people are probably aware of our views and opinions on water, and that is you can't split water. Water uh, 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 could be described as an element unto itself. It's something that you cannot destroy, you cannot create. It can just change from one form to another, like ice to liquid to gas, and even steam, and so so on and so forth. And back again. Them, and back again. Mm. But uh, a lot of people seem to have, they've got this crazy idea that you can actually split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, this is uh, water splitting details, and it's a little... Uh, it's a little it's uh, Dave Lawton's replication of Stan Mason. Who is it? Water, Patrick fuel. Kelly. Sorry, uploaded by Patrick Kelly. It's um, I think it's, it's Dave Lawton's replication of Stan Mayer's water fuel cell. Absolutely. Some decades ago, the English Channel Four TV station broadcast a documentary program entitled "It Runs on Water." Wow. The program was not particularly informative and had no information on how to research further into the subject. But through that program, I became aware that there was such a thing as free energy. Wow! Free energy. Free. Well, there's people mm. out there. Very loopy. The most interesting section of the documentary was an introduction to the work of Stan Mayer. Of America. Stan gave a brief demonstration of his water fuel cell, which is a device for converting, here we go, water into gas. Not actually by electrolysis, but instead a process called water splitting, which uses very little electrical current and does not generate heat in the process. Stan's cell looks a bit like that. Okay. Mm. Now, I mean, at the end of the day, when you think about it logically, you know, they're telling you like so many people do, that you can split water, hydrogen, and oxygen, and and voila, you know. Mm. But in our view, that is a total load of rubbish. The hydrogen and the oxygen, in many of these cases, come from the um, electrodes. Decomposition of the electrodes. Decomposition of the electrodes. And if you add a an electrolyte, then it's more than likely the electrolyte can break down as well to produce those gases. Yeah, because the electrolyte would speed up the rate of decomposition. Position. Absolutely, of course. But uh, he uses uh, tap water in this, and I think what we should do is go on to uh, go on to here. I mean, you can see. I think there is the photo in the photograph. You can see the when power through stands. You can see the bubbles produced. Mm. So, in other words, what Stan Meyer did was that he produced a um, a, a bit of kit that would produce a very a, a lot of hydrogen and oxygen hmm. Basically, with, yeah. through its design, you know, because he used tubular uh, cathodes and nanodes, which had a lot greater surface area, yeah. which would produce a lot of uh, gas. And then Dave Lawton, um, who, was, who, um, who replicated uh, Stan Mayer's work. Uh, work, Dave Lawton of Wales, um, mm. He, by using very considerable tenacity, he discovered, Dave, discovered the practical details of how to replicate one of Stan May's early designs, which is called by the rather confusing name of the water fuel cell. Water's not a fuel. You no. Check it up on Wikipedia. It will tell you, well, you can't, water is not a fuel. Mm. Dave's work was copied and experimented with by Ravi Raju of India. Mm who had considerable success and who posted videos of his results on the web. 
Dave Lawton there. There's a photo of it. The video of Dave Lawton's replication of Stan, Stanley Mayer's demonstration electrolyzer, which can be seen at http www.freeenergyinfo.com. That's caused several people to ask for more details. Absolutely, of course. But, in, in you know, it's another example where we're seeing uh, the idea, only the idea, that water can be split into hydrogen and oxygen even though in, in the real world it, you can't do it. In one of these apparatus that Stanley Mayer has, has created, you know, you can't do it. No. You, you just can't do it. What you're doing, in our opinion, of course, all you're doing is you're decomposing Everything. the um, anode cathode. Yeah, one. basically. That's all you do. The metal plates, because the metal they're plates. of the same material. Absolutely, of course. And he in this one, he... He used um, water from the tap, and we all, everyone should know, water from the tap in many countries um, contains a lot of chemicals and a lot of additives, and they would speed up the rate of decomposition of the metal. And you may even find that the um, those um, impurities in the water will decompose as well. Yeah. As a result, so when you think about it, when, what we're saying no, rubbish. Use is the mouse. That, yeah, what we're saying is that this little gadget here is just a load of rubbish. Mm. Water splitting my backside. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, of course. So you know that's that. You know, uh, so uh, you know if anyone uh, thinks Stanley Mayer was a uh, you know some kind of genius, genius. and no. whoa, you know, no, no way. Oh, and he did a runner. He didn't die mysteriously. No, I don't think he died mysteriously. Oh, and he did at all. a runner. Oh, I reckon he he stopped 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 being in the public eye. Yeah, he could have been. Because yeah. I mean, who who would care if he? No. Nobody would go after him to find out what happened to him, would they? Yeah. Nobody, nobody would even care, really, would they? Yeah, but the, uh, the comments have turned off this video. Yeah, the comments turned off on this video, so we can't, you know, we couldn't leave a comment. Uh, neither can you, either. Uh -huh. Oh, well. Never mind. So that's that one. And so moving on to uh, this one, as we got it up. Following on from James O'Brien. Following on from James O'Brien, we got on to, um, we got on to, I got to talk to somebody and they gave me a link to this page here, a website, all about 100 proofs that the Earth is a globe. Mm. Okay, and from that site, we'll come back to this website, but we got on to this one here. Uh, 100 proofs that the Earth is not a globe. Mm. It's not a globe. By William Carpenter. So you've got this website here, 100 proofs that the Earth is a globe, and you've got this book here, or pamphlet, 100 proofs that the Earth is not a globe. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's just, crazy, isn't it, when you it think just, about it? Um, it just typifies uh, man's, the duality in man's life. Or in, in man's society. Yeah. You know, there's a duality. You know, in, right from left, rich from poor. Rich from poor, black from white, you know. Day and night. Flat from globe, you know. Yeah. But uh, this this uh, pamphlet was written by William Carpenter in 1886, and uh, you can you can have a little read of it. Uh, let's have a little read. Uh, we've yeah, got number 55. Yeah, some of the sections the moon's beams here. Are cold. Let's have a look at some of the sections here. He talks about yeah, the moon's beams are cold. Here we go. Oh, sorry to apologise. Clicked on oh, clicked on the wrong one there. There you go. Uh, the moon's beams are cold. That's up there. What else have we got? We've got uh, pendulum experiments. He also does has a look at the Bedford level. Um, probably um, does an awful lot sailing down and underneath. Mm. You know, distance round the south. Lighthouses. Lighthouses. Earth's curvature. The first Atlantic cable. Oh, he's got Suez Canal. Hundred miles level. Oh, okay. So it doesn't do the. Uh... No, there is a bit in there about the Bedford Level experiment. Oh, yeah, I've uh, I've seen it. I've actually uh, read through uh, just a, a chapter or not even that. I think the first page I actually had a look. That uh, oh, right, yeah. yeah, I went got through the first bit. Got through the first bit. It's in a response to uh, Mr. Proctor. Mr. Proctor was is a globy, and he's kind of like. Uh, Mr. Carpenter's writing a response about it. That's why it's uh, dedicated to R.A. Proctor. Esquire. But, yeah, if anyone wants to have a look at that, or yeah. if you haven't already, you know. But uh, when we go back to this website, 100 Proofs That the Earth Is a Globe, um, he talks about proof, the nature of proof. 
because obviously he feels it uh, important to uh, talk about the nature of proof. Well, because there's a difference between proof and evidence. Yeah, evidence is, can be just can just be any kind of information, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's false, incorrect, or whether it's true or whatever. It doesn't matter. That's evidence. Evidence can basically, if you've got a bulge in your pocket, for example, that could be evidence that you've got a, a bag full of money in your pocket, couldn't it? It could well be, yeah. Could yeah. well. That's <clears throat> evidence. That's a good example of evidence. But that doesn't mean that you've got a bag full of money no. in your pocket. No. You might have an orange in your pocket. It may well do, yeah. You know, or a tangerine. This is the whole point, and that's why if you if you were to take out or we were to look inside your pocket, we would have the proof. We would mm. be able to take out and see what's there. But uh, we go through all of this, and at the end of it, it says, if the GLOBE model passes all of the tests, then we can conclude that it is a good and useful model of reality. It might still not be the truth. He goes on. Well, that's no good then, is it? Well, even I think, well, what's the point of doing it if it's still not the truth then? You know, yeah, no, no. you know, if any future observation or experiment can contradicts the GLOBE model, then as scientists we must either reject that model, revise it, or come up with a better, better model. This is the way the scientific method works. No, that's the way people work. Yeah. yeah. You know, ideally that's what they should be doing, but they don't do that, do they? Yeah, no, it doesn't prove things by establishing them as true. It proves them by testing them. That's what we're doing on the site. But how can they prove that the Earth is a globe? Absolutely, yeah, they can't prove the Earth is a globe. Yeah, nobody can prove the, uh, the the shape of the Earth. Nobody can do it. The only way you can do it is by going if by going in a little spaceship, going in a rocket, and to, to going up there and going out into space. What mainstream puts across is up there, going out into space and having a look. And have a look, absolutely. Have a look for yourself. Absolutely, of course, but uh, there you go. I can't Seeing think. is knowing. Absolutely, of course, but uh, there you go, yeah. So, anyway, but uh, interesting stuff from that, and uh, very good stuff from that, I suppose, you know, because it's all rubbish. Rubbish. It's all yeah. absolute rubbish. The worst thing is, is that he's done a whole website, basically, on rubbish. On rubbish, yeah, he's done 100 kind of like bits of information. No, yeah, he's probably got those 100 proofs that the earth is not a globe he's got those hundred and then he's written his own to say counter arguments counter arguments yeah that's, yeah, that's all he's done yeah because it makes it easy anyway but uh, there we go anyway yeah. <sighs> molten salt reactor here we go molten salt reactor fundamentals now um, we got talking to somebody I don't need this I don't need this of course about molten salt reactors and we were saying that somebody said that uh, we were in conversation with somebody else and they said that a molten salt reactor doesn't use fuel rods. Oh yeah, it was the it was the it was the comment Kurt. we highlighted on our last video. Yeah, of course. So um, um, I don't need this. Uh, dis I don't disagree with that. But then after a bit of research, he he came back and he said, "Okay, yeah, I got it wrong. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, they don't use fuel rods." So we're going to play this this bit here. Okay. So have a little listen, and then what we'll do is we'll basically get. Uh, we'll come back to our point about nuclear reactors, won't we? Well, have a listen to this and see whether you can understand how a molten salt reactor works. Actually works. Okay, you're right. You ready for this? Listen. Molten salt reactors differ from most nuclear power plants in operation today, such as light water reactors. To understand how, let's review the basics. Nuclear power plants generate electricity through a fissile chain reaction. Fissionable isotopes like uranium-235, 233, or plutonium-239 absorb a neutron and then fission, that is, split apart into fission products. In that process, they generate heat. As well, they eject more neutrons to continue the chain reaction. A moderator is usually employed to slow down the neutrons so they are more likely to cause another fission when they impact the fuel. In the case of light water reactors, solid fuel rods contain the fissile material. Water surrounding the fuel acts as both a moderator and coolant. The coolant carries heat to turbines that generate electricity. In a molten salt reactor, the core operates very differently. 
The primary coolant is a salt heated above its melting point, so it is a fluid. While private industry is developing several distinct designs, here's the most commonly proposed configuration. Instead of fuel rods, fissile material is dissolved in the molten salt. The fuel flows around graphite rods, which moderate the energy of the neutrons to support the nuclear chain reaction. Other designs include liquid or solid fuel contained in rods, similar to current reactors, but with molten salt as a coolant. These reactors can use a broad range of... Yeah, quite interesting. But the, the main thing is, is that you've always got to ask yourself, where does that initial neutron come from? Well, in that diagram at the beginning that we saw. At the diagram at yeah, the beginning, there. yeah, of course. Yeah, let's just... Uh, yeah. It's just mute. Yeah, this this. Where's uh, that neutron come from? Yeah, where where does the neutron come from? You know, that's on the left hand side. That yeah. little red dot. Yeah, that little red dot. Where right there? It should uh, there. The neutron. neutron. Where's yeah. it come from? You know, they, they, they don't. They never tell you where it actually comes from. You know, yeah, there it goes, and it hits the the first um, uranium fuel bit of fuel. But where's it come from? Yeah. And we and we think it 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 repeatedly bombards the fuel, those uh, fissionable isotopes, yeah. with neutrons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're continually bombarded yeah, with neutrons. So you don't just get one neutron, you get many neutrons. neutrons. Yeah, absolutely. And those neutrons are, are generated by a neutron howitzer, sure. which is, uh, and, those, and that's powered by the electricity that's used to generate that the power plant generates. Absolutely, of course, yes, yeah. because uh, it's accelerated and ste it steps up and accelerates yeah. and all this kind of so stuff. How does the salt, molten salt reactor work? Yeah, you see, the thing is, is that they say that they put the. Uh, well, they, but what was interesting, if you just replay the the audio of the molten salt of reactor, the molten salt reactor. Right, okay, so from here, let's go. It's very. Here. Yeah, let's have a listen to this again. In a molten salt reactor, the core operates very differently. The primary coolant is a salt heated above its melting point, so it is a fluid. While private industry is developing several distinct designs, here's the most commonly proposed configuration. Here's yep. the most commonly proposed configuration. In other words, in other words it doesn't, they don't work. Well, they haven't, they haven't done it in this particular way. Yeah. Depending on how old the, this video is, by the way, isn't it? So well, I'd imagine this video is. Uh, this video 20, must be quite 2018. Yeah. So I mean, it's possible they might have it up to scratch now. But the point I'm making is that they're not explaining how a molten salt reactor works with tested processes. Absolutely, of course. Let, let's just carry on again. How uh, how? Instead of fuel rods fissile material is dissolved in the molten salt. The fuel flows around graphite rods, which moderate the energy of the neutrons to support the nuclear chain reaction. See, so, so where did the neutron come from? from? Yeah. You know, again, where did the neutron come from? You know, we've got to remember that, um, you know, in, the, in, this, in this setup, they're using graphite rods. Mm -hmm. Graphite conducts electricity. Yeah. Okay. Graphite can withstand high temperatures. Mm. And if you're using molten salt, you can you don't have to reach very high temperatures, do you? Not you know, not high high temperatures like fifteen hundred degrees centigrade. Well, it depends or, what salt you use, really. Sure. But the salt they they would probably use, I'm sure, would be such sodium. They used Oak Ridge, they use sodium. Yeah. Yeah, but it, wouldn't be, it might not be sodium chloride because that, I think that's uh, eight hundred degrees centigrade. Yeah, I would have thought Melting it would be a, it would be a, it would be a um, could be sodium be a salt that has a low melting point. Then you wouldn't need a lot of heat. Yeah, sodium hydroxide, which would make sense. Yeah, in other words, you can conserve energy mm. if you have a lower um, yeah a, a but, lower temperature. But again, working temperature. But again, there's, there's got to be a new uh, uh, neutron howitzer absolutely it bombard something with neutrons yeah so it's it's our view that basically they mix the they mix into the salt they mix their 
um, uranium source u- uranium and um, it could be it could well be that the carbon the graphite sorry the graphite rods actually is uh, are, are wired up or connected up to where the neutron source could well be yeah and they basically fire the neutrons at these um, graphite rods. Mm. And what's important to remember, and that is because there's no water involved, the graphite rods are less likely to, to decompose as much. Yeah, absolutely, of course, yeah. The, yeah, because there's no water present, the graphite rods can... Uh, can withstand know, the environment. Can last longer. Can last longer, yeah. Yeah, they won't decompose. I mean, it does make kind of sense. Yeah, doesn't if, it? If anybody knows how a uh, molten salt reactor works, please let us yeah, know. Yeah, please let us know because, I mean, any, anything's got to be better than, you know, the information here. You know, again, you know, we've got to yeah, ask. Because when, when you think about it, these diagrams are pretty crap, aren't they? They're, they're pretty rubbish, yeah, because we're like, they're not telling you anything. Yeah, where, where does this neutron come from? It's got to come from somewhere. It can't just, you know, you know, it's got to come from somewhere. The, something's got to start the reaction yeah. off. Come on. So that's food for thought for all, all you guys out there. And we're on the last one, aren't we now? Yeah, last so, one. So we can go, hydrogen comes from these, not water. Now, we're only doing this in, con- in the context of our video because yeah. hydrogen, you can get a source of hydrogen from, from lots metals. Of, from metals, from uh, urea, from lots and lots and lots of different plastics. sources. Plastics, that's a good one. I like that one. You can get it from shale, shale, coal. coal. You can get it from graphite as well. Yeah. You can get it from graphite. You can get hydrogen from yeah. many, many sources. But in, in this particular video, we're only going to concentrate on wood. Wood. Absolutely, of course. Because it ties in the video we showed to everyone at the beginning. In relevance to the wood gas yes. the video. So we've got night hawk in pigeon, daytime, uh, night time, night, day hawk. Day pigeon. Day in pigeon in darkness. In, in darkness, of course. And how to make wood gas biofuel, okay. And uh, let's just cut out the sound. Now, it's quite interesting that one of the things I did find interesting and that is when he when he starts to light these these uh, the actual gas. He's always got to keep the flame of the lighter close to the wood gas because if he took it away, it would go out. Yeah, but there was a bit where he he allowed the gas oh, to come out from the, the, from the charcoal. That's when he was making charcoal. Yeah, here it's different. Go, yeah, right. he lights it. And it continues to burn. Continues to burn. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that, of course. So there must be something different going on. Absolutely, because when it's under pressure, when it's under pressure, because it was the gas was under pressure. Yeah, well, the heat was on the outside. Well, the, the gas was under pressure when he collected it in the tank. Oh right, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, he had to hold the lighter up, the flame up to it all the time. Yeah, sure. But uh, now. What he's basically doing here is that he's making his little, um, he's creating charcoal. Uh, so in his little tin, he's got a pipe, okay, pipe coming out where the gas is going to come out of, uh, the wood gas. And <clears throat> in the bigger container, he's going to stack loads of bits of uh, combustible material, other bits of wood that he's going to light. Yeah. So he's essentially making charcoal and collecting the gas now the thing is is that i know there's water contained in gas okay i'm I'm aware of that but the thing is is that he he's able to make a flammable um uh substance there Mm. okay coming off from the uh partial combustion or thermal decomposition of the wood Mm. some people would say that that's uh Carbon monoxide. Oh, he's got it there. He's got it. He's kept it going there. Some people would say it's carbon monoxide. Some people would. Um, he's often said, "What did he say? Butane, methane, and elemental it's hydrogen." Yeah. In all of this, but um, the it's thing got is, a yellow flame there. It's got a yellow flame. It's pretty all right, isn't it? But the thing is, is that it's not splitting water. Well, it's not. Can't be, can it? Can't be splitting water. He's not using water. See, a lot of people think he's, that he's not using water because in our last video, when we were looking at the definition oh. of hydrogen, we were actually putting forward that hydrogen uh, is called hydrogen in our view 
because you need water in order to produce it. Need Not what? that the hydrogen comes from the water, but you just need the water to decompose, say, the metal in order to release the hydrogen. Hydrogen, yeah, sure. And when you think about it, that view still holds true, even though um, Day Hawk in uh, Pigeon Light um, has managed to uh, produce his wood gas because the wood gas isn't essentially hydrogen as such because there's a lot of impurities present as well. Hmm. So he can't, he's not producing hydrogen as such. Not hydrogen in its purest form. Absolutely. In order to produce hydrogen in its purest form, you have to use water. You have to refine it. You have to refine it, which means you need water. Yeah, and you have this to is the it. point. You have to clean it. Sure. Um, using water. Yeah. So the point is, what we're trying to say is, is that I'm sure you've probably gathered already, and that is the hydrogen really comes from the wood material and not water that's used to clean it. Clean this wood gas to produce the hydrogen. Mm. Yeah, that's the point we're trying to make. Absolutely. If you think we're wrong, you know, we'd love to see some information that you've got. You know, but you know, I, I, for the life of me, I, I can't see anyone coming up with any information to um, to disprove us. Yeah, and another thing that's interesting, and that is with this, is that like I mentioned before, and that is the flame is yellow. Now, in the video where he was making um, that other gas, that was had a yellow flame. Oh. Is it carbon monoxide? No. Yeah. Well. Well, it was. Yeah. It was. Oh, yeah. he was. He had some graphite electrodes in water, didn't he? In water, yeah. And he put oh. 150 amps current through it. Yeah, yeah, sure. And he produced the gas, yeah. And he produced the gas, and that gas burned with a yellow flame. flame. Now this burns with a yellow flame, and that indicates to me that the wood contains sodium, which sodium. it does, because everybody knows that if you burn wood, you'll get soda ash. You'll get soda ash, yeah, you get soda ash. So you th you think to yourself that basically, you know, and you've got, yeah, <coughs> wood contains, wood contains a sodium. salt. Yeah, it contains a salt, and it contains an acid as well. Yeah. Tannic, tannic acid, doesn't yeah. it? Wood. Which would produce your carbon dioxide. Absolutely, which would produce your carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide on when it's thermally decomposed. You know, but, uh, you know, I mean, for anyone to think that water's H2O and, you know, the hydrogen, any hydrogen comes from water alone, alone, you know, and no other material, you know, you've, you need you need to you need to get a reality check, you know, because you, right, so. you, you're thinking something that cannot be proved to be true. true. We, we can't prove the hydrogen comes from wood, but we, it's just our opinion. We, mm. And we, we can express our opinions, can't we? Yeah, yeah there we go. So that's it, you know, that, isn't that wonderful? Like we've done that already, haven't we? Yeah, there we go. And, and uh, I think, the, did, did we mention about the oxygen when he talks about the oxygen? Oh, well, you were going to mention that, go on. Was I going to mention that? I've forgotten where he was talking about no, it. Was just, um, I think it was, was it where he was showing the can. Was it when he was showing the can? Yeah, he was stuffing the... Uh, Oh, or was it there on the pile when he had the pile? It was starting to hear. Let's just, yeah. let's just li listen to this, okay? I hope we get the right part. And close them in a small metal container, in this case, a small paint can. I want to pack my container as full as possible so that there's plenty of material in there to make a lot of gas. Here's the stove I'll be using to heat my smaller can, and I've shown this stove in a number of videos now. No, it's, it's very before. simple. It's just a so Wait it can then. be put to good use. Wood gas is produced when any organic material, not necessarily just wood, is heated, but not allowed enough oxygen to catch on fire. Now, when's it, when, now he, he only thinks the, he's only got the idea of oxygen present hmm. or not present yeah. in, his, in his can. Yeah, because really he could have just said air. He could have just said air, yeah. you know, and it would have been fine, you know. Mm. But, uh, you know, so he only, th he only thinks oxygen. Yeah, because he can't prove there's oxygen in He can't air. prove that once, he's, once he packs all of his uh, wood bits in the can, there's no oxygen in that can. Yeah. Or there's very little of it. He can't prove that to be the case at all. Mm. No on.
But it just goes to show that people, because of the information they've been given through education, by other people, it's easy that other. It's easy for people to just to adopt it, not question mm. it, but just to adopt, adopt it, it yeah. take it on board, yeah. because they. I don't know, you know, but you know they can't prove it. That's the mm. problem. Can't prove it to yeah. be true. Go on. Anyway, that's it. You know, so uh, that's it. Looks like uh, we've we've done it again. Hydrogen comes from these these wood pieces in this uh, example. If and you're making, water. Yeah, if you're make, when you're making wood gas. When you're making wood gas. Yes. Oh, right, yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, you know, the, the thumbnail should have been, hydrogen comes from these when making wood, wood gas. gas. Yeah. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Because it doesn't come from any water, water. you know. No. So uh, you guys will have to get it out of your head that hydrogen comes from water. Mm. Yeah. Of course. So there you have it. So uh, there, you, there you have it. So wonderful stuff. Yeah. And I uh, hope everyone liked the... Uh, like the uh, the uh, thorium reactor yeah. behind us, which is pretty pretty good. And yeah, uh, no, we're not going to have uh, good looking girls on the back there. Yeah, no. absolutely. Of course, Sorry. or sunny beaches in uh, or Bahamas or whatever. At the back of there, absolutely. Of course, but uh, thanks ever so much. And always remember till next time. If something doesn't make sense, like like Galileo demonstrating that there's demonstrating helocentrism. Way back in 1500 and whatever. 1600 or 1400 or whatever. Yeah, absolutely, of course, yes. Or even thinking that hydrogen comes from water because you can split it oh, into wow. hydrogen and oxygen. Oh, wow. And to think that Stan Mayer wasn't decomposing his stainless steel. Absolutely, of course, Metal yeah. plates. Or even thinking that a vaccine is something that you can have and you can still get the disease afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. Oh. yeah. Absolutely, of course. Or even thinking that, uh, even thinking that, uh, yeah, the the Earth's a spinning ball. Mm. Absolutely, of course. It's all nonsense, isn't it? Absolutely. So thanks ever so much, and we'll see, see you next time. time. Bye. Yeah. Tell her. The Earth isn't round; it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat everywhere. It's flat.